it's a kick away, it's a huge kick, that could bounce through. Welcome to Alberton Oval, the home of Port Adelaide, Australia's most successful football club. Port Adelaide's values are pretty simple. A community-based club with an unrelenting pursuit of success that never, ever gives up. And those philosophies started a long time ago, back in 1870 to be precise, and the story goes a little like this. The Port Adelaide Football Club began life as a sporting social club for the young men of a working class district, most of whom plied their trades on the nearby wharves. The blue collar men were nourished on a diet of hard work just like their fathers before them. They were unfashionable, but they were tough, very tough, and they were Port Adelaide. This rugged, uncompromising attitude was taken onto the football field, and by World War I, Port Adelaide had already won seven premierships. When the world around it was fractured by war, Port Adelaide remained united, taking football to a new level. It went through the entire 1914 SANFL season undefeated, and later that year won its record-breaking fourth Champions of Australia title when it defeated VFL Premier's Carlton at Adelaide Oval. Throughout the remaining war era, Port Adelaide continued its success, holding the Premiership Cup aloft another five times. I mentioned Port Adelaide was renowned for being tough, and a club for the battlers. Well, battlers like former Premiership captain Bob Quinn. In fact, this stand I'm sitting in, named after him. Bob won McGarry medals as the fairest and best player in the SANFL in 1938 and 1945. His second McGarry medal was won after returning from World War II, where he was awarded a military medal for courage, leadership, and devotion. During the war, Bob suffered horrific shrapnel wounds to his leg, Doctors considered amputation, but Bob pleaded that his leg simply be bandaged. Two years later, he won that second McGarry medal with his leg heavily bandaged, serving as a permanent reminder to his extraordinary courage. In the late 1940s, two pretty significant gentlemen would join Port Adelaide in the club's quest to build another generation of success. Foster Neil Williams was appointed captain coach and big Bob McLean was afforded the responsibility of general manager. Their vision spawned the club a peerless period of sustained success, a new legion of Port Adelaide heroes proudly lacing up their black and white prison bar Guernseys to win seven premierships in the 1950s, including a remarkable six in a row from 1954 to 59. That's right, a national record, six premierships in a row. You start to get the idea of what the definition of success means to Port Adelaide. Not a premiership here and there, but regular dynasties of success. Throughout the following three decades, Port Adelaide would climb to the top of the mountain a further eight times. In 1989, Port Adelaide enjoyed one of the biggest grand final wins in SANFL history. Port Adelaide kicked 16 goals 18 to defeat North Adelaide, who could only manage one goal eight. It was the Magpies' second premiership in a row and 29th overall, and the club entered season 1990 against the backdrop of a looming, expanded national competition. 
The West Coast Eagles had entered a team in the then VFL from Perth and Brisbane had entered a team from the Sunshine Coast. And all the while, the SANFL refused to consider entering a team from South Australia until at least the mid-1990s. And the heavy hitters from Alberton were getting agitated. They'd just won two premierships to close out the 80s and year after year were losing champions like Craig Bradley, Martin Leslie and Greg Anderson to VFL teams. No longer could the boys from Alberton stay idle. Living to their charter of wanting to play in the best competition available, they made the audacious bid to enter a team in the AFL in 1990. This decision by the board of directors of Port Adelaide is obviously the most significant move made by the club in its 120 year history. It demanded that Port withdraw its bid and stop all negotiations with the AFL by 12 noon tomorrow. This league will not support the Port Adelaide Football Club in any way in its bid to enter a team in the Australian football. So we can't stop things now, they, they will go ahead. It's understood one option is to ban the club from playing in the SANFL. And a silent and flushed magpie group emerged. We're going to have a very, very sad situation here in South Australian football. Port Adelaide proud, gee, given KG no sort of serve. Pretty bold stuff, but that's Port Adelaide. Brave, daring, agents for change, a let's make it happen type attitude. History will tell us that Port Adelaide's first bid to join the AFL was unsuccessful amid a backdrop of court injunctions and intense SANFL lobbying. But it did lead to the birth of a hastily established SANFL composite team, the Adelaide Crows. For the next few years, the club would work its backside off to be considered for the second South Australian AFL licence and accordingly won four of the next six SANFL premierships. When the second AFL licence became available, Port Adelaide was ready to go and the club started a new chapter on the national stage in 1997. The legacy of those heroes who for more than a century played their role in Port Adelaide finally entering the AFL will never be forgotten. In fact, their legacy grows with every win. The names of the players and coaches and administrators change over time. We even added a new colour, teal, to the traditional black and white. But what doesn't change is the legacy. Port Adelaide doesn't just want to win, it expects it. Having a very good corner. Will it carry over the top? Today at the MCG might just be their finest hour. Bullseye! And the flag is theirs! There it is! It's all over! Port Adelaide! They had the power to win! And it was very much history in the making today! This is what football is all about. In only its seventh year in the AFL, the club won a premiership. Only seven years. But after all, that's Port Adelaide. We're talking about a club that wants to create history time and time again. In 2014, another new chapter of the Port Adelaide Football Club was written. The club returned to play football at Adelaide Oval, the iconic ground where 20 of Port Adelaide's 37 premierships have been won. When you go to Adelaide Oval, heroes are everywhere. Most weeks, you'll find 50,000 of them sitting in the stands, singing Never Tear Us Apart, riding every bump and screaming their lungs out in the hope that their club, Port Adelaide, wins the day. It's a place where history is made and remembered. It's a place where our community spirit and unrelenting pursuit of success will always live on. And it's a place where we will continue to never, ever give up. So welcome to Port Adelaide. It's now time for you to make your own history and pass on this club's unsurpassed legacy to the next generation, whether that be with the Magpies in the SANFL or the power in the AFL, because we are Port Adelaide.